All right, so let's discuss desertor squat today. So some of the benefits of desertor squat are some, you know, it's heavy core activation. When I do that, I'm really feeling my core, your upper back and your traps are working a lot. Also, if you're having any kind of like wrist or shoulder mobility, for instance, if you can't get your arms back for a back squat, well, it's just easier to hold it in your, in your arms here. Or if you can't hold the bar like in a front rack position for a front squat, it's another accommodation. Uh, additionally, if you don't have a squat rack, there are ways to do a desertor squat from the floor and uh, you can't really do that with you know the back squat or anything or at least anything heavy. You can clean the bar up but you imagine from front squat would probably be a lot more than what you can clean unless you're you know a high level Olympic weightlifter. So here's the main points that you want to be thinking of when you do a zercher squat. You're gonna lift the bar in the crooks of your elbows when you start a squat, I recommend starting with a hip hinge and then go into bending your knees. You go down until the bar pretty much hits your thighs and then you stand back up and then return the bar. Okay, so now that you've seen a general idea of how to do the movement, let's talk about some more of the specifics and different sort of variations you might want to do. So before we get into the elbows, a lot of people complain that this is an uncomfortable movement, this hurts the elbows. Well, yeah, it kind of does, you know, toughen up. Also, like if it hurts too much, you're starting to feel damage, lighten the weight. Another thing you can do is get some elbow sleeves, some knee sleeves, that can help. Or put some fat grips on the bar or use an axle bar so that, you know, the bar, you know, is kind of thin. The thin bar kind of digs a little more than a fatter bar would. Problem is with a fat bar, then the weight's even more in front, so it becomes a little harder to get heavier. Or you could, you know, put some a squat pad on so you get more... Uh, protection, you know, more padding. You could wrap a towel around the bar. Preferably, what I do is I just, you know, put some knee sleeves on and just uh, get the bar here. Okay, so now there's three main gripping that, gripping options I see and only two which I really recommend or to use. So the first one, which is probably get the most upper back and traps engagement from is get the wide grip, what we're gonna do for the uh, two best options I'd say, is we're gonna externally rotate our fist and we're gonna really squeeze our fists when we're here. And we squeeze our biceps and everything to keep tight. When we squeeze our fists a lot, that creates a irradiation for the body, so our, nice, our body's nice and ready. So we turn our fists out, nice and wide, shoulder width apart, keep the bar in and here, and we do our squat from here. And additionally, when we really squeeze our fists here, it just hurts less because there's more muscle for the you know bar to rest on. If we kind of relax and try and lift a bar like that, that's gonna hurt more than if we tighten our muscles up. Now, the second grip, which I'd say you can go a little heavier on, is you get your grip nice and close. We keep our, we don't let our hands touch we're here. So instead of nice and wide at a shoulder width apart, we kind of round our back a little bit and get in close. I think here we're able to lift a little more weight, at least that's what I notice, is we're able to focus a little more on this, you know, part of the bar instead of being nice and upright. And then the third part is you do the close grip, but you grab your hands. I don't like this because this force is even more rounding than you would really want. At least here we're able to sort of keep our shoulders retracted as much as we can and here as well we're not able to really tighten our fists as much and we're not able to get that nice external rotation to hold our shoulders back and you know to get all the benefits of that so what I would say is that you can do one phase with the wider grip I'd, I'd, rec I'd suggest you know you or at least I'd expect you to lift a little less with this wider grip and then if you go into a phase afterwards, a little more intensity phase, we have the closer grip. You could also, if you're you know running, you know short of time, for, I mean there's no there's no search or squat competition, so I don't think so. But you know if you just want to get some benefits out of it, now you can start here wide grip on the light sets, and then on the heavy sets move to the narrow grip. However, I don't really recommend this because when you're doing 
uh, a movement. You want to have the form be from the lightweight to the heavyweight. You want it to be the same because you want to help grease the groove of that movement, help build a technique. Your body's going to be a little more confused if you've done all your light sets, all your repetitions, you know, with one form, and then you get to the heavy set and you're like, okay, let's go like this. So I'd say start off three weeks wide, and when you get really comfortable with that, you can start playing around with a more narrow grip and see how that helps. But potentially, you prefer to wide grip. That's fine. But I'd say there's benefits to everything. Except, you know, this one. Well, I do see people being able to lift a lot of weight with this one, but I'd say you get the most benefit being able to tie in our fists. So the way to do a zerger squat without a rack is you just simply deadlift the bar to your knees. You rest them on your knees, you squat back down, you rearrange your arms to put the bar in the crooks of your elbows, and then from there you just squat it up. And then once you're up here, there's two options with your legs. Either you can put your legs a little wider, push your knees out, and have your elbows come in between your legs, this is more of a strength movement in my opinion, and you're able to go heavier. Or you can put your feet in an arrow stance and then do the same thing. In this way, I'd say this is more of a bodybuilding accessory movement and really targets the quads. My preference is the wide stance since I'm an athlete and I'm looking more for strength and performance. Okay, so I hope that video helped you. Again, this movement is a great movement. Definitely really builds the legs. It has benefits of you know making your core a lot stronger, your upper back and your traps a lot stronger. It's just, you know for specificity reasons, for a grappler, think of someone coming in for a clinch, for an underhook, or maybe you have someone's leg in a single leg. I mean nothing more. You're, you're holding the person's leg in their uh, in the crooks of your elbows. That's a uh, that's a zercher. So you know it's a lot of benefits for those reasons. Uh, it just builds that you know grit that you need to when you're fighting. And then to go over. You know some of the uh, you know technical aspects. You have either your wide grip, nice upper upper back, or your narrow grip, slightly more rounded back, able to lift a little more weight. And then you have your two options of your legs, either nice and wide for more of a strength movement, be able to get a little deeper, or nice and narrow as an accessory or bodybuilding movement, really focus on the quads. All great movements and. Let me know if this video helped you and I'll see you in the next video.